When I was younger, I worked at the Rodney Hunt Foundry in Massachusetts. I got to actually bring the wood pattern for this machine into the foundry for them to pour some of the castings to sell to customers. Ever since then, I've wanted one of these machines, but couldn't justify it and couldn't afford it at the time. This is a Greenard number no. four Arbor Press. I found one fairly local here that is in great shape and pretty much ready to use. What I'm gonna show you today is a couple of different operations you can do with this machine. Assembly, disassembly, cold forging, and shaping operations like that. But then I'm excited to get started with on this machine. So here is one example of an operation that this machine is good for, and that is pressing dowel pins into fixtures and parts and assemblies. And what I've done here is I have three holes that are pre-drilled and reamed ready to go. This is a 3 8 dowel pin. And one thing that I wanted to point out that I like to do when there's room is I have reamed the top of the hole at 5 tenths above the size of the pin. So the press fit in the bottom is going to be 5 tenths below the size of the pin, so I can't put it in there manually. If I try to just press it in from this side without any guidance, I'm not really guaranteed that the pin's going to go in straight. Now, the pin is mostly going to align to the hole, but if you're doing precision work, you want to start out as straight as you can so that when it goes into the hole, it ends up perfect. So one trick to that is to ream the top of the hole if you have room in the thickness of the part so that you can just drop the pin in there. It aligns itself and then you can press it in. Um, so basically this machine is made for assembling and disassembling tools, fixtures, car parts, engines, things like that. And it gives you manual control. It's fascinating to think that the patterns for these are all made out of solid mahogany, uh, so they're all wood. You have to remember that this whole thing was made out of solid wood, uh, laminated and cut with a draft angle on it, assembled as one piece. A lot of the ones that I've seen have an issue with the head. So up here in the casting, if you look at them online, we'll have a broken section right here. There'll be a section broken right out of the head in the casting. And I think what that's from is people either overloading it and it's pushing the rack bar um, away and that's just the weakest spot. Or people will be pressing something together and they won't realize that it's not straight. It'll be at an angle, which will cock the, uh, the press ram out at an angle with tons of force. So this is a seven ton, so you're looking at 14,000 pounds of force, which, you know, by press standards is not a lot, um, but for a manual press is a pretty decent amount of force. So now the assembly's easy, and I can go ahead and press this pin in there without worrying about the alignment of it as I go. This is a 5 tenths press in aluminum, which is fine. If you're doing big pins or long depths in steel, you probably want to go less than that. So another operation I want to show you here is how to press fit bearings. And I've made up this little bung here and we're going to press these bearings onto it as an example. One of the most difficult things is pressing them on straight and without damaging them. You want to only press on one part of the bearing or one race of the bearing that's not going to put any pressure on the balls inside of it. So for example, on this one, where we're gonna press it onto the shaft, we only want to press onto the inner race here to avoid damaging the balls in the middle. What uh, usually works well for that is some tubing or pipe sections that you can cut and face that will press on the section you want without touching the 
shield on the bearing or the outer race. This one, because the bearing uh, inner race sticks out a little bit above the surface of the bearing, we can place it right on the table here and start by pressing directly down with our shaft. This one has uh, all the parts and pieces with it. It's got a moving knee. It has the handle for the knee. It came with the daisy wheel on it. And this one has some interesting pieces down here. It's a retainer ring for catching bars. Uh, a lot of the stuff that this machine would be used for is shafting and things uh, assembled or disassembled with shafting. So you can drop the bar down and it won't fall over and roll onto the floor or damage the bar more than necessary. And this pad on the bottom, it's a cast iron pad with a lead port in the middle. So when you're, the piece you're pressing out runs into that, it's not going to damage the bar, it's going to damage uh, or dent the lead instead. So one thing I wanted to mention too is to never really trust the face of the ram to be flat or parallel. It's a pretty good reference, but if you can, it's better to put another piece of material in between there. And what we can do here is position it on center as best we can visually, bring the ram down with the hand wheel into place, and then we can start applying pressure with the arm and press it right in. And then if you look closely on this one, there's a gap here because we need the shaft to come out past the inner race in the bearing. So all we have to do is flip it over, take our piece of pipe that allows the shaft to come in on the inside. So we're only pressing on the race here and then we can bring the ram back down and press it the rest of the way. That's one easy way of getting things beyond the end of a shaft like that. So there's one side, we've only placed force on the inner race, pressed it on the shaft, and that bearing will not be damaged that way. So we can flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Try to keep it visually centered so that your load is on the center of the ram. And then we can take our pipe and do the same thing to get that last little bit on the other side. And we can feel it hit the bottom so we're not overloading the shaft and potentially distorting it. And that's our assembly. So this machine is great for things like this and you can also use it to disassemble this or rebuild something. You can use the daisy wheel and select your correct spacing or make one that fits so that you're only supporting the bearing race on the bottom and you can press the pin out this way in whatever configuration allows you to get the bearing off. It is a ratchet system. So on the left side here, you have a manual wheel that rotates the gear shaft so you can move it quickly to get clearance and be out of the way or in the position that you want to be. When you get down into position, what you can do is you pull the handle down. After about 10 degrees or whatever it is, it will engage this lever arm here. So you pull it down and then when you go back up, it's going to ratchet back out of the way so that you can press the entire range that you need to to get your part assembled or disassembled. Here we have another pressing project. What I've done here is I've turned up a series of these rods. It's an aluminum rod with a ball turning and a cutout on the end here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press the end where this shape is turned so that we can get it flatter, wider, and thinner to make room for a couple of holes or a slot that we're going to put in there. And what I've done here is I'm using a couple of buffer blocks here that have a ground finish on them. That's going to allow us to get a better finish on the part. If we had just used the block here or the ram, we're going to get an imprint of whatever shape, uh, dings and dents and scratches that they have in them. We're going to get that imprint on the part. 
And uh, one of the biggest benefits of these machines is the movable knee. So it has a knee on it similar to a Bridgeport milling machine where you can crank it up and down to get different clearance for different size parts. So just by cranking the handle on the side, you have another foot or so of travel, allowing you to do some pretty big uh, or long parts with it. Helpful for broaching and things like that. If you need to push a long broach through there, you get the extra travel with this machine that you may not be able to do on a small hydraulic press, or if you did, you'd have to move the table on that one also. And then when you get to position, you can just tighten the nuts on the back and you're secure and ready to go. So we have it set up here between the two blocks under the ram and we have it visually centered again to get the load even as much as we can. And I'm just gonna press this down and see what kind of result we get for a shape. And kind of what I'm doing right now is using the part itself to hold the block on the top to the ram. And then I can use the wheel and bring it down and that lines it up. And then we can squish this one and take a look. I'm actually able to hold the bar straight in the back while I'm pressing it because it does tend to want to sway towards one side and you can really control the angle of it by very little pressure as a leverage on the back side of the part. There is something about feeling the metal move that is inherently pleasing when doing metal marking. A lot of the time you want to get those parts done as quickly and easily as possible. Other times it's important to enjoy the process and learn as you go. I think that's one of the things that I really enjoy, getting that hands-on experience and enjoying the process as you go on a project. A big portion of my interest in it aside from the functionality is the aesthetics. I do like the old castings on these machines. This shape and these forms remind me of the old style micrometer frames and things like that. I appreciate the structure and the design and the engineering in these. It's as pleasing to use as it is to look at.